Myers, makers of Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair, bring you transcribed Duffy's Tavern with our guest tonight, Charles Coburn, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meets eat. Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Tonight, uh, Charles Coburn. Charles Coburn. Now, Duffy, don't hang up. All right, so one week it ain't a dame. <laughs> huh? You never heard of Coburn? Duffy, I'm surprised. The, the uh, gentleman's histrionic talents have made him one of the foremost exponents of Festus. Yes, he's a ham. <laughs> yeah, been in show business for years. How old is he? Well, uh, let me put it this way. He's old enough to know what it's all about, but uh, he ain't young enough to do nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A lot like Jolson. <laughs> Except if Coburn ever got down on one knee, he'd never get up again. <laughs> how's, how's business here? Well, uh, we're running ahead of yesterday. Yeah, we was closed yesterday. <laughs> well, you know something, Duffy? You know what would help business here? Uh, a, a, a doorman, you know, a good front man. Huh? Well, uh, when a customer comes into place, what's the first thing he thinks about? Right. About leaving. <laughs> so, we got to have a front man to block the door, and, uh, this Coburn is a natural for the job. <laughs> yeah. You ought to see the front the guy puts up. <laughs> His, uh, duties, uh, well, we'd expect him to go up to the customers, you know, and inquire, for instance, how they like the food here. Duffy, who's gonna hit a guy his age? <laughs> well, look, I'm busy now. I'll call you back. But, Duffy, me and Eddie is right in the middle of some very important business. Okay. Okay, Eddie, deal out the cards. <laughs> okay, Miss Archie. What is a wonderful game, you know? What'd you say the name out of that? It's called Jim Rummy. <laughs> Named after that famous gambler, Diamond Jim. You know. <laughs> Diamond Jim, huh? I thought this game was called Jim Rummy. You're thinking of Eli Whitney. <laughs> sure, he invented the cotton gym. I saw the great game. Yeah. Very educational. Yes, sir. Yeah. How much do you owe me so far? <laughs> see, now you, you gym me four times, 3,000 points. Times it by seven is 21,000. 21,000 plus 10,000 for boxes is 32,000. Uh, multiplied by four. It's an even dollar. <laughs> okay, give me the buck. Okay, here's the buck. Now, uh, lend me the loan of the buck back. Uh, nothing doing. That's bad luck. I ain't gonna lend you no money. You won't lend me a lousy buck? That's a fine attitude. Suppose other people felt that way. Suppose Isabella hadn't lent Columbus some money. Do you realize the world would still be flat? <laughs> hey, I'm surprised at you. Hey, Archie, uh, this Charles Coburn who's coming down here tonight. What about him? Well, why don't you ever have anyone like Robert Taylor or Tyrone Power to meet me? Tyrone Power. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, when a guy's got a Philly Mignon at home, he don't go out to eat hash. <laughs> I might further mention that to get guys like Tyrone Power down here, we'd have to induce them with a little sex appeal. Huh. Sex appeal? What is it? Nothing but sheer plain animal attraction. Animal attraction? Look, have you ever been to the burlesque? Yeah. Ever see crowds like that at the zoo? <laughs> How old is Mr. Coburn? What's it to you? Well, in case he happens to find me irresistible. 
Look, Miss Duffy, the guy may have gray hair, but his opticals are still good. <laughs> now, beat it, will you? I uh, wish to be alone. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> My wish has been granted. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Finnegan? You look a little tired. Oh, yeah. I couldn't sleep a wink last night. Couldn't sleep, huh? Did you try counting sheep? Yep. Counted up to 864. Yeah, and still couldn't get to sleep? No, oh, the room got so stuffy, I had to get up and open the window. <laughs> How come? I made a mistake. Instead of sheep, I was counting goats. <laughs> Uh-huh. Another thing that kept me awake was a loud party going on upstairs. Well, uh, why didn't you go upstairs and tell them to shut up? Uh, well, as it turned out, I didn't have to. You see, the ceiling in my apartment ain't too strong. So? So the next thing I know, I'm dancing with a tall blonde. <laughs> you mean the party dropped in on you and uh, carried on in your apartment? Well... Uh, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, as you know, the floor in my apartment ain't too strong, neither. <laughs> so you dropped in on the people downstairs? Sure. How long did this party last? Clear through to the basement. <laughs> uh, you, you know them penthouse parties are. They go on for a long time. So, as I say, I didn't get a wink of sleep. Well, what'd you do all night? Played solitaire with me brother. Solitaire with your brother? Two of you's playing solitaire? What else could we play? We only had one deck of cards. <laughs> oh, so you played cards, huh? Yeah. I didn't know you was a card player. Oh, I'm very good at it, Art. Maybe we can get up a little game. Well, good. All right, we'll play dealer's choice. Uh, what game do you like? Flipping them into a hat. <laughs> Boy, that's a wonderful card game. Yeah, it's better card game than it is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping them into a hat. Huh? I thought that was very funny. Flipping them into a hat. Huh? Yeah, I thought you too. Uh, mm, uh, look, uh... Uh? Uh... How would you like to play a little rummy? A little rummy? Why not? I'll play anybody. Finnegan, <laughs> I mean Jim Rummy. Oh, 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 Jim the Rummy. A new card game. Oh, uh, how do you play it? I'll show you. You got any money? Well, I got half a buck. In that case, I think I can teach you the game. <laughs> well, thanks, Dutch. And I think you'll find that I learned very fast. Well, if you learn very fast, how come you don't know nothing? Oh, easy come, easy go. <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel that way, Finnegan. Now, put up the 50 cents. Okay. All right. Now, card for you, card for me, card for you, card for me. Uh, Miss Arthur, uh, how can you do it? It'll be a lesson, Tom Eddie. It'll teach him not to gamble. <laughs> Hello, Arch. Oh, hello, Joe. Did you finish your broadcast already? Yeah, and boy, if I have to work with that comedian one more week, I'll blow my top. Why, what's the matter? He got so many laughs tonight, I had to cut the commercial. This is bad? <laughs> well, certainly it's bad. It was awful. Because I never got a chance to say that I pan a toothpaste is the toothpaste more dentists use themselves, as well as recommend to their patients, than any other. You ought to try the Ipana way yourself. It's easy. First, between regular visits to your dentist, brush all tooth surfaces with Ipana toothpaste at least twice a day. Then, massage gums the way your dentist advises to stimulate gum circulation. That's all. But see the difference Ipana toothpaste can make to your teeth, to your smile. Notice Ipana's wonderful flavor, too. How it leaves your mouth fresher, your breath cleaner. You'll really like Ipana and what it can do for you. So get a tube, first chance you get. Remember, a good dentifrice like a good dentist is never a luxury. Make the Ipana way your way to healthier gums, brighter teeth, a more sparkling smile. The Ipana smile, the smile of beauty. Hmm. Well, Finnegan, that's that. Okay, Arch. You owe me three bucks. 
Thanks. Uh, okay. Hey, huh? <laughs> Thanks, George. Hey, he... hey. Hey, wait a minute. What? That guy that just came in. I think I've seen him in the movies. Ain't that Faye Bainter? <laughs> Finnegan, that's Charles Coburn. Oh! Well, Mr. Coburn, may I tell you that many great stars have passed through these portholes. <laughs> But you are the portliest of them all. <laughs> and furthermore, may I say that we are indeed pleased... Oh, shut up. <laughs> so this is Duffy's tavern, hmm? Mm-hmm. Where's Duffy? He's home. He's smart. <laughs> you don't like the place? Well, it's sort of broken down and decrepit. But then... Who am I to talk? <laughs> That's right. At least you've got a roof over your head. <laughs> By the way, uh, are you keeping busy these days? Oh, yes. My days are quite full. Pictures, radio, personal appearances, looking for work. <laughs> well, we, uh, how long have you been an actor? About 50 years. Fifty years, almost a decade. <laughs> Look, uh, as long as you brought it up, uh, just how old a man are you? Uh, approaching sixty-five. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell me, uh, at an age like that, what do you do for amusement? <laughs> oh, I collect antique furniture. Antique furniture. <laughs> Did you buy these antiques when they was new? <laughs> All except the 18th century stuff. John Quincy Adam outbid me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I ain't got no antiques to amuse you, but uh, how about a drink? Thank you, I will. Okay, Eddie, uh, three fingers of warm milk. <laughs> uh, would you like something to eat with it, Mr. Coburn? No, thanks. I have to be very careful what I eat. Yeah, and what's the matter? Is stomach kicking up? It used to, but it hasn't got uh, the strength anymore. <laughs> All it does now is to squirm a little. <laughs> Here's milk, Miss Coburn. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll have to take these pills first. Pills, eh? I see. Hey, what's them red ones for? My liver. And the green ones? Kidneys. Uh, how about the brown ones? Stomach. Oh, uh, tell me, what's the purple ones for? Just a dash of lavender to round out the color scheme. Say, <laughs> uh, say, Archie. Uh-uh, we're in trouble. <clears throat> I suppose you want an introduction? To him? Eh. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm afraid he doesn't appeal to a person of my sex. Archie. Yeah? What sex is that? <laughs> She's a girl. You could have fooled me. <laughs> well, we might as well get it over with. McDuffie, this is Charles Coburn. How do you do? No. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Coburn. But May can never wed December. <laughs> Miss Duffy... December had no intention of asking you. <laughs> Miss Duffy, can't you see that he ain't interested in you? Oh, no. Did you see the look in his eyes? Forgive me, dear lady. I was carried away by your lovely, ravishing face. I can go along with the gag. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me something, Mr. Coburn. Yes? Do girls go out with you? Oh, once in a while. How do they explain you to their folks? <laughs> they usually say, Mama, see what I'll have to marry if you don't let me go out with Joe? <laughs> well, well, Mr. Coburn, don't feel too bad. Remember, any girl who'd go out with you isn't worth having anyway. <laughs> Miss Duffy, will you please desist your presence? Me and the gentleman here has some business to discuss. 
Uh, tell me, Mr. Coburn, uh, how long did you say you've been an actor? Fifty years. Fifty years, huh? Don't you think you ought to settle down to a steady job? <laughs> A steady job. Yeah. Where? Here in Duffy's Tavern. I'd rather marry Miss Duffy. <laughs> the hard way, huh? <laughs> Look, it happens that we have a very important job open. What kind of a job? We need a front man. A front man? Yeah, and you're just the type, you know. Prosperous looking, well fed, well dressed, business like, perfect phony. <laughs> Well, what do you say? But, Archie, uh, a job like that, uh, wouldn't it tie me down? Not too tied down. Take me. I work here, and I wasn't too tied down to do a picture for Paramount. Yes, I saw that picture. Oh, really? What'd you think of it? You should be tied down. <laughs> Mr. Coburn, for a man who is seeking employment, I should think you'd be a little more diplomatic. Uh, I was only fooling, Archie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed the picture. Did you? Mm, yes. Especially Dorothy Lamour. In that sarong. Oh. How old did this guy say he was? <laughs> you like that sarong, huh? Yeah, didn't you? Uh, personally, I never gave it a second thought. I, I was too busy with the first thought. <laughs> but what a cast we had in that picture. Remember Bing Crosby? No. He was in it. Uh, remember Betty Hutton? Yes. Remember Victor Moore? No. Remember Veronica Lake? Yes. <laughs> remember Alan Ladd? No. Remember Diana Lynn? Yes. Looks like December has moved up a couple of months. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great cast. We had 34 stars in addition to me. Yes, 34 stars and one eclipse. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, no, uh, no, I ain't got him out on the sidewalk yet. Huh? Well, I figure on rainy days we can let him stand inside, you know, next to the cash register. Well, Duffy, we can have him bonded. <laughs> Look, Duffy, there's nothing to worry about. He's the, the settled type. You know, not bright enough to steal and too old to run. <laughs> uh, incidentally, how much do you think we should pay him? Duffy, he can make more money than that out of Social Security. <laughs> huh? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> be with you in a second, Mr. Coburn. Uh, Eddie, Duffy says we've got to test the guy's character before we hire him. Character, huh? Yeah, and I agree with him, you know. I won't have nobody around here, Eddie, unless he's honest. There's two things we got to have. Character and honesty. Now, we got to test the guy. How? We'll clip him in a poker game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sure way to test out a guy's character, you know, to play him poker. What would he win? Then he's fired. We can't have guys around here without characters. <laughs> Did uh, you fellas say you're going to play poker? Oh, yeah. You want to sit in, Joe? No, thanks. I'll just stand around and make suggestions. Everybody's a kibitzer. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Arch, not really. If you happen to have a queen, I'll just casually mention that every queen goes for a guy that has that well-groomed Vitalis look. I might even go so far as to say that you can look like a king after a Vitalis 60-second workout. Won't cost you so much jack, either. And you like Vitalis, especially so if you're troubled with dry, unruly hair. Hair that's been dried out by sun, wind, and water. Why, no other hair preparation can give your scalp and hair better protection than Vitalis and the 60-second workout. For the Vitalis formula contains two of the same ingredients that many skin specialists prescribe for dry, flaky scalps. Plus all the other extras that make your hair more handsome, more healthy looking. So try the Vitalis 60 Second Workout. Let us prevent scalp and hair dryness, rout flaky dandruff, and give you the best looking, healthiest looking head of hair you ever had. You'll look your best tomorrow if you get a bottle of Vitalis today. <laughs> Now, look, 
look, fellas. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, leave us not scare this guy off by mentioning poker right away, you know. I'll lead him up to it gradually, you know, subtle like. Uh, subtle like, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, Mr. Coburn. Uh, yes? Uh, speaking of baseball, uh, them St. Louis Browns is the best baseball team in St. Louis. Don't you think so? No, I like the cards. Speaking of cards... <laughs> how uh, would you like to indulge in a nice sociable game of, say, uh, Jim Rummy? Well, frankly, I don't know much about cards. A pigeon. <laughs> uh, you say you don't know much about cards? No, no. About uh, six years ago, I did play a game called uh, poker. Poker, huh? Uh, what kind of a game is that? Well, it's been so long ago, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, why don't we play again? Maybe it'll come back to us, huh? All right. Uh, if you'll promise to be patient with a greenhorn. <laughs> I'm even greener than you. No, I'm much greener than you. No, I'm a lot greener than you. <laughs> you did the two greener backs as I ever seen. <laughs> well, get the cards. As long as we got a real sucker here. <laughs> I don't know a thing about poker. The poker! Oh, boy, poker! <laughs> Do you play poker? No. <laughs> No, no, I don't, but I got some luck. If you got any kind of luck at all, that's the kind. <laughs> now, Fennigan, all you got to remember in yeah. poker is one thing. Yeah. Don't go into a pot unless you got four of a kind. Uh, four of a kind. Eh? That's right. Yeah. Don't go in unless you got four of a kind. Yeah, okay, I got it. Well, Mr. Coburn, uh, what shall we play first? Say, uh, one and two? All right, a hundred and two hundred. <laughs> shall we compromise? <laughs> All right. Two cents and four cents. <laughs> All right, now uh, let's start the game. Now go ahead and deal out the cards. Uh, by the way, you do know how to deal, don't you? Well, I used to be able to. Now let me see. Hmm. Three missing. <laughs> Do. Well, by a very fortunate coincidence, I happen to have a deck of cards right here in my pocket. Oh, really? In your pocket? Uh, how long did you say it was since you played? Six years. This is an old coat. <laughs> mm. I wonder if I'll be able to remember how to play this uh, poker. Yeah, I wonder if I'll remember too. Uh, how are we going to play? Straight poker. Jacks are better, nothing wild. <laughs> Mr. Archie, I got a queer feeling that ain't such an old coat. <laughs> well, let's look at him now. Let's see here, what have I got? Hmm. 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 I'll open it. I bet uh, four cents. Wait, no, I don't. Leave it there. That's down or dead. <laughs> hmm. uh, are you staying, Eddie? No, I'm dropping out. Uh, me too. Me too. Uh, you win the pot, Mr. Coburn. Oh, do I win? Yep, take the money. Well, this is great fun. <laughs> Beginner's luck, I guess. Yeah, what'd you have? A pair of bullets. I mean, uh, two ones. <laughs> Deal next, Daddy. Uh, by the way, Finnegan, what did you drop out with? Oh, nothing. Three kings. <laughs> you dropped out with three kings. Well, you you told me to only go in with four of a kind. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, yeah, I won't do that. Just wait till you get four of a kind. Sure. Well, here's your card, gentlemen. Hmm. 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 Oh, boy! I open it! <laughs> you open it, Finnegan? Yeah, yeah. In that case, I think I'll drop out. <laughs> and me, too. Well, I think I'll stay. 
brave boy. <laughs> okay, how many cards are you drawing? None. I, uh, I think I'll stand pat. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll stand pat, too. Hey, very shrewd poker, Finnegan. <laughs> Here's my bet. I raise you. I raise you. I said it fight. Finnegan, <laughs> he's got a right to raise you. This is a democracy. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, you can re-raise him. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, I raise, and I re-raise, and uh, I, I raise, and I uh, re-raise you again. I double it. Okay, I'll drop out. <laughs> I'll drop out. Why? We ain't got enough dough. Wait a minute. I might back you if you got what I think you got. Don't worry, Arch. I got him. You got him, huh? Yeah. That's good enough for me. Mr. Coburn, we raise you two. Four. Eight. Sixteen. Thirty-two. Sixty-four. Give me a pencil. <laughs> Ninety-seven. <laughs> What do you got? Ten, jack, queen, king, ace. A straight? That's all? <laughs> Finnegan. Yeah. <laughs> Show your cards. There you are, Rod. Let's see. <laughs> Ten, four, two, seven. Jack. Finnegan, where's the four of a kind? There they are, four space. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I thank you very much. Good night. Good night, Mr. Coburn. Uh, hey, wait just a second. Uh, I think this ace belongs to you. It just fell out of your cup. Oh, did it? <laughs> well, you may keep it. I've got a million of them. <laughs> Mister, we're sure of it. If you'll just try Benex Brushless Shave Cream for a few days, we're sure you'll use Benex for life. Yes, Benex. B-E-N-E-X. Gives you the best shaves you've ever had. For Benex gives you three big extras. First, Benex Brushless gives extra easy shaves, thanks to a special beard softening formula. Second, Benex Brushless is extra smooth, lighter. So different, it rinses off your razor instantly. Third, Benex Brushless gives you extra comfort. A special after-shaving action leaves your face feeling wonderful. Just try Benex. See for yourself. That's Benex, B-E-N-E-X. Benex Brushless Shave at your nearest drug counter. Get Benex tomorrow. <laughs> Duffy. No, we uh, decided not to hire Coburn. Well, uh, we found out his memory was a little better than his character. <laughs> huh? Well, next week, uh, Chester Morris is coming down. We'll try him. Oh, I don't know. Maybe uh, trap shooting or something. <laughs> okay. again at the same time next Wednesday when our guest will be Chester Morris. Duffy's Tavern is brought to you by iPad or Toothpaste for the smile of beauty and by Talus for well-groomed hair. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers brings you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these stations. The preceding was transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.